the 120 trade on, it have two things happen. Number one, you can get a bigger credit for it, or you can make it a wide. And you're selling something against that to finance the debit. I, I want to show you something that might scare the bejesus out of you. Okay. And uh, so my most it's not a picture of my mother-in-law, is it? No, no, no. no okay. I, I, I'm saving that for the end. <gasps> Welcome back, trader, uh, to Trade Check Report. I am very excited today because I have my new buddy, Sweet Bobby, here. He's a professor down at Bama, and he has developed killer option strategies. Uh, let's jump right in and see how Bobby's crushing it in the markets. Welcome, Bobby. Well, first of all, Tony, it's an honor to be on here with you. I've been uh, uh, following you for years. Uncle Tony, uh, every time you're on uh, with Tasty, with Tom and, and Tony, and it's just an honor to be here with you. And uh, I told Tony the other day, I said, I actually have Tony from Mexico's cell phone number. And now I've got it <laughs> programmed in my phone. I feel like I'm somebody, Tony. Well, you are. You can now you can Venmo me if you want. <laughs> yeah. I just will not send any nude photos. I promise you that. How about that? No, no, that's some <laughs> goodness. Some goodness for that. Uh, yeah, none of that at all. Yeah, but I'm for, Bobby Gaines and yep. um Please I, tell us about you. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and so uh I do I I teach a course at Alabama on investments. Yeah. And we uh we actually cover option strategies. And we don't have textbooks. I just teach them how to trade, which is kind of cool. And the University of Alabama allows me to do that. That's and great. Uh, I'll also be teaching at the University of West Georgia in the spring as well, which is about 12 minutes from my house. And we'll be teaching those kids portfolio management, which is really, really good. And how did you convince the university to let you uh, teach options? Oh, I just lied on my uh, resume and told them that I knew what I was doing. No, <laughs> no. Uh, fortunately, the the University of Alabama allows me the freedom to create my own syllabus. They don't require me to use a textbook. They don't require me to do any of that. And, you know, Tony, that's the thing with young people in college now. When we go over options or when I was in undergraduate school and we went over options, you know, we maybe spent five minutes on it talking about, OK, here's options. There's puts, there's calls. It's very speculative. And we really don't have to worry about that. And then we would go on to the next thing. And the 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 issue is, is that the professors that are teaching the investments and portfolio management classes have no experience whatsoever in trading. No, no, of course. they. Uh, you know, I don't want to say the name of the university, but here in California, uh, uh, they asked me to give a couple of lectures at a top 20 school in the U.S. about derivatives. And uh, the professor that teaches derivatives, he's a super smart guy. He has PhDs from Yale, Stanford, everything. And we had breakfast before uh, they allowed me to do the lectures. And I asked him, hey, uh, how long have you been trading? And he told me he had never traded. And I said, oh, my God. So you're the you're the main derivatives guy and you haven't placed a trade. So that, that was kind of weird to me. Yeah. Tony, I, I spoke to a, a professor the other day. And their specialty and their dissertation is on real estate. So they wow. teach real estate courses. And I'm like, wow, I bet you own uh, quite a bit of, you know, commercial or residential real estate, don't you? No, they own zero real estate, Tony. And they're teaching real estate. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad that, you know, we live in an er era when people who have the theory are right. being rewarded and elevated to these positions and the people that actually have the practice are not in the classrooms teaching the courses. So that's one thing that we're changing. And I'm very fortunate the University of Alabama has said, Bobby, just teach what you uh, you want to teach. And that's what we do. That's great, Bobby. That's great. And I'm curious, how did you get into trading, Bobby? So, Tony, I made my uh, since I'm a thousandaire, uh, you know, I know you're probably a multimillionaire. I'm a multi-thousandaire. And how I made my multi-thousands was at an early age, I began working with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And yep. I put 10% of my income for almost 30 years into the C fund in the thrift savings plan with the government. Wow. And they matched me 5%. So I was having 15% in the S&P 500. And that's how... 
I was able to retire when I was 51 years old is I had put money in the S and P 500. Wow. I was wow. never really a stock trader mm -hmm. or, you know, a derivatives trader at all until I was installing my new television because my younger children uh, were throwing rocks at my television. And so they bust <laughs> my TV. So I got a new TV and it had this thing called Roku on it. Yeah. And yep. you know, here I am boomer, you know, trying to install the television. And after I do it, it says explore channels. And one of the categories was finance. And so I was looking at these finance channels and there was one with a cherry on it and it was called tasty trade. And so I downloaded it. Yep. Yep. That's great. I saw this homeless guy <laughs> with a beret and a mafia looking uh, Tony on there. And I thought, who in the hell are these two? I mean, these two clowns. And <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. hey, I found out that they were the real deal. And Tony, I've been watching them every Thank day you. since. I mean, they are part of my day. And uh, I watch Tom and Tony uh, daily. I never miss confirming sin. I never yep. miss uh, options jive. I never miss uh, market measures. And I try to always catch the last call. So uh, you're, you're you're very kind. You know, Tom and Tony are not only probably the best two traders in the U.S., but also one of the two kindest and smartest human beings that you'll ever meet. So, uh, I've been very lucky to call them my friends, and uh, and I'm I'm glad you you enjoy them because they're really really fine people, and they have dedicated their life to uh, you know you know preaching. Uh, training to the individual investor. And this is what I hope to achieve today with you. Uh, share some wisdom, share some knowledge and provide value uh, to everybody watching us today. Well, and I think here's the encouraging part of what I do. Everybody thinks that you have to uh, come up with your own trading strategy. And that is not the case. Here's what I do. I look for smart people like Tony and Tom and Tony from Mexico and I watch what they're doing, and then I copy it. Unapologetically do I copy it. And then I throw, it's like throwing spaghetti noodles up on the wall to see if it sticks. I throw right. what up, it's up there and sticks, and then um, if I like it and it, it works great, then I continue doing that. So nothing that I do is an original trade. Now, I, there are instances where I may say that I name it after myself or something just right, for right. vanity or ego, but all the stuff that I do is really good. And I would encourage anyone that is watching this uh, podcast today to go into tastylive.com and to do a search on the Liz and Jenny show. And there is a, I think it's called a trader spotlight or something category and watch Tony's video from just a couple of weeks ago where you went through broken wing butterfly where you went through the 111 trade, the yep. 441 trade, the yep. 221 trade, and the ratio spread. Right. So Tony went through five different trades, yep. all of which I pick up and have traded. 111 and 112, I have traded all of 2022, all of 2023, and part of 2021. Wow. And then, Tony, I took from that, and I mm -hmm. decided to uh, incorporate the 441 that you did, right. my trading strategy, and the 221, uh, which are, are very good strategies and just variations of the 111 right. and 112 trades, and incorporate that. And I don't actually do ratio spreads. Yeah. But you, one of the things that I have now, since I like having a trade named after me, is I'm going to call it the Sweet Bobby Slide. Oh, I like that, sweet Bobby. And the so sweet, that, that yeah. segment that you're saying it's called Trader Instinct. Instinct. Trader Instincts. That's right. Trader, Trader Instincts. Instinct. And uh, you know, when you have a chance to co-host a show with Liz, uh, you know who who can say no to that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I enjoyed it so much, and Everybody's it was trade dream. It was great you know? because Liz gave you the freedom to come on there and to just show the things that work for you, Tony. And uh, thank you. It was it was a very good segment. Both you sales. know, when you build, you you start construction. You know, in options, we only have two ingredients. You know, we have uh, calls and puts, which is like mortar and uh, and re rebarb. So and so, we only have these two things, and we can buy them or sell them or combine them or whatever. So it's really uh, 
there's a limited um, amount of stuff that you can do. But what I have found out is that the most powerful, the most successful foundation, if like if you want to build a house, you want to put a solid foundation, is to uh, buy buy a put first, uh, and normally around the 25 delta, and then sell something else. You can sell two of them to make the one, two, zero. Then you can sell one and one to make the one, one, one. You can buy four of them, you can have four, four, one. I mean, and we can go through that uh, in the in, in our trade page further on. But to me, I after I've traded so many years, I've put on maybe more than 100,000 trades in my career. And uh, I finally narrowed it down to a solid foundation and then grow from that. And I was happy to see you and Tom Shaw, you know, I th because like you said, I consider myself, um, you know, not the inventor, but the uh, the precursor to the uh, to one of your trades, the one one two, by doing the four four one and the one one one, etc. And uh, you guys came up with the uh, the same conclusion that those uh, ratios uh, are are the most powerful, most uh, consistent, and most profitable trades out there. Absolutely. And what I really like is the risk profile. It's so beautiful right. on the Tasty Trade uh, software to see that you make a set amount of money if the market goes up, and then right. you have a windfall profit if the market goes down, and that put debit spread has had ample opportunity to mature. So it really does make for a great campaign style trade, Tony. You know, uh, that's. You nailed it. I want to talk more about that because I am not really a campaign trader. I am an opportunistic trader and I, I want to become a campaign trader and like you and uh, because I want to have more consistent uh, profits. I, I really am. I, I only trade when I see the pitch coming at me and I want to learn how to be a more consistent campaign trader. Uh, so that's that's something I want to learn from you today, Bobby. And, you know, one of my, my sayings is death before debit. And actually what I mean is death before extrinsic. Uh, I don't like to pay for extrinsic value. Probably you don't too. Of course, we all buy puts. We all buy calls. We don't tell our wives. We don't tell our friends. You know, we want to make the home run trade. But uh, one of the, the fundamentals of trading, uh, if you want to be successful and you want to last in this business, is uh, this death before debit concept. What do you think about that? I like that. And by if, if and if you do buy something, for example, in the one 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 trade, you're buying that uh, put debit spread, but then you're selling something against that to finance the debit. That's exactly what I love about options and what it allows us to do. So, yeah, we're not blindly buying something, but we're buying right. something that gives us a little bit of insurance protection to the downside. And then we're selling something to finance that. And the combination of those trades is really good. You were talking about um, campaign style trading. Yes. Um, one of the things that I have always tried to do is to monitor my portfolio by the Greeks. So I would allow the Greeks to tell me if oh. it were time to put on a trade or I would. Uh, the, the new thing that I'm doing on one of the newer accounts that I'm trading is yeah. I'm allowing time to tell me when to put on a trade. So for example, I'm putting on a one, one, two trade, which is the same as a one, 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 except it's got an extra uh, neck right. put. Right. And I am doing one of those every week. So every Wednesday I'm putting that trade on. So uh, this week on Wednesday, I will put it on at 120 days to expiration. Right. And then the next week, there will be one at 127 days to expiration. So regardless of implied volatility, mm -hmm. regardless of market movement, I'm right. putting on a one, one, two trade wow. every wow. week, Tony. So no that's, matter. yeah, no matter, no matter. And the you good know, thing about that is I don't have mm -hmm. to be opportunistic and right. wait until the big down move to put the trade on. I'm just putting the trade on. Right. Uh, is there... Um, can you share some of your rules of uh, of theta, of extrinsic? I don't know uh, if you're willing to show us, show a little bit of your magic, your magic sauce there, Bobby. Absolutely. And I'm, let's see if I can share my screen here. Oh, I right. can't wait. Show me the good stuff, Bobby. And Tony, Ooh. if 
Block, I can make this available uh, to uh, your podcast subscribers too if they would like to see our trading plan. Oh, but, thank you, Bobby. That would be great. Where, where can they go and get your trading plan? Well, I can uh, give it to you to upload, or they can go on YouTube to go and just search out Sweet Bobby Trader. And uh, it, it's in the uh, description of all my videos there where they can Thank get you. This. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. This is what I love. Let's go. Let's get, all right, let's so get into the weeds. So you'll notice that the latest trading plan, because I'm always tweaking. I am an yep. educator. I am yep. an experimenter. I do not mind experimenting with trades. And so every time I make any change to it, I change the date. So the latest trading plan that I'm doing is November 16th. And basically, here's what I tell people that I teach trading. Any trade that you make that is not part of your written plan is a stupid trade. All right. I like that. So if you don't have a plan and you're making a trade, then you're making a stupid trade. So I try to, <laughs> the people that I work to, and I made a lot of stupid trades over the years, Tony, a lot um, of them. Not so, more than me, for sure. So I try to make sure that anything that I do, uh, because I'm an undisciplined person, I eat yep. too much. I don't exercise enough. I, I use language I shouldn't use sometimes. I'm undisciplined in every area of my life. My kids are out of control. They're destroying my house. You know, I'm not a good parent. I'm not good at anything. So if in order for me to keep things in line, I have to have a written plan. If I want right. to lose weight, I have to write down what I'm eating every day. It has to be part of a plan. So right. basically what I say is that we try to extract profits from the market utilizing micro e-minis and e-mini uh, S&P futures. And that's what I love. I love trading futures. And I don't, I used to trade gold and crude oil and all that, but kind of like Karen the Super Trader did, I just yep. kind of, you know, I just love the S&P 500. It's something that Me I too. understand. I'm an SPX it, trader and you're looking for a 20% annual return minimum, you said, right? A minimum 20% annual return. Now, do I always get 20%? No. Last year yeah. was uh, a difficult year because I was trading with a TQQQ uh, plan along with my 111 and 112 plans. But okay. the 111s and 112s that I traded last year, Tony, we yep. were up 24% on those campaign trades. Oh, my God. Wow. That's unbelievable, Bobby. Bravo. Wow. In a market, in a market where the the entire market was down twenty percent, so what I have found, and you may or may not agree with this, is in a bull market like we've had this year, yep, it's difficult with the one 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 and one one twos to keep up with the market returns. But it's very, it's very difficult. The worst markets are the the one way up markets. I don't mind flat markets. I don't like, I don't mind down markets. The worst markets for me are up, up markets in my point of view. I agree totally. So what we're trying to do is to basically keep pace with the S&P 500 in bull markets and in bear markets, we should outperform the S&P 500. So that's the thesis that we've developed. So the strategy is composed of two primary components, naked puts and a put debit spread. That's a one 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 or one one two trade. And yep. then Tony, what we do is I like to to keep up with delta. I don't want my delta more than 0.15 percent of my uh, total net lick. So in other words, I try to keep as delta neutral as possible. Oh, well, that's that's very very small. 0.15 of the of your net lick. Yes, 0.15 of my net leg. All right, all right. So, that's good. yes, that's good. Now, where did I develop that? Yeah, Tony, it was some obscure market measure. I'm sure everything that I've done, I've copied <laughs> from the market measure. So, I'm so it was some obscure market measure that basically said, "Oh, I know what it was. It was uh, it was Tom Sosnoff yeah. basically saying on a hundred thousand dollar account, I don't want to be more than 200 to 400 deltas. deltas. I remember. Right. Yeah. Right. 200, 400 exactly. deltas. And yep. so I went a little bit conservative. Instead of 200 deltas, I, I brought mine down to 150 deltas for a uh, $100,000 account. So 0.15%. Wow. Then 
This yep. one is my theta is definitely based on uh, tasty research that said, you know, you want to keep a minimum of 0.1% of your net lick in theta. Now, when you say 0.15%, is that your daily theta or your monthly theta versus your net lick? Yeah. Can you so give I, us an example? Yeah. So I basically do this every day. Oh, I'll my go, God. I'll go wow. into my spreadsheet. This is my baby, Tony. This is my, Ooh. this is my, this is, this is the baby. And yep. so what I, what I'll do is I'll go in yeah. and I'll update my deltas and you yeah. can see it turns green, which tells me I'm fine. Okay. And then, uh, depending on what the VIX is and VIX is 12, right. it's saying that my max theta should be about 0.10%. I'm a little over in my theta. I'd be, oh. rather be over than under. Not too bad. Not too bad. And then with this that particular theta, that theta on column D, is that your daily theta? Yes, that's my daily theta. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh Tony, I keep up with the buying power that I use. Yeah. And it says max buying power under this current VIX is 25% and I'm at 32%. So now, if you change the VIX, will the bu max buying power change? If yeah, the, the VIX this? goes to 30, let's say, or whatever. What's this? VIX goes to 40. And all of a sudden, it says Ooh. I can get up to 50% of my buying power. Isn't wow, cool? Bobby, this is very, very great stuff. I love this. Yeah. Wow. So it uh, it keeps up. And so, like, when we look on, this is a, one of the small accounts that I trade. Yeah. But when you're looking, and I told you that it's hard, it's difficult to keep up with the S&P 500. It the S&P 500 is up 18.45%, but my account is up 16.48%. So I am basically targeting the S&P 500 in bull markets, which we've had this year. Yeah. And then in um, in bear markets, we should outperform. So but overall, you know, that's, uh, that's not a fair comparison because the S&P 500 is all in. It's 100 percent investment invested sure. and you're sure. only invested uh, 25 percent. Right. Right. So right. actually, your sharp ratio, or your risk, uh, risk to return ratio is is, 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 is unbelievable. Right. Right. Like this year, what what is the maximum you've been in, using in capital? I'm just curious. Yeah, let's see. So we did get up to ninety percent. Well, ninety. Whoa, over eighty. Yeah, ninety. Let's see. Ninety was the worst I think. Yeah, that we got. So we got up to ninety percent. So sometimes when the market goes down, our buying power increases significantly. Yep. But the thing normally when I just sit around and do nothing or close those trades that we've got on then, uh, you know, things get back to normal. But, yeah, you can see when the market was starting to go down there for several days, we uh, our, our buying power certainly did increase. Nice, 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 Bobby. And um, I want to ask you, you know, you work like I've worked all my life. And uh, would you say you've made more money trading or more money working? I've made more money by putting 15% into the S&P 500 over 30 years than any work that I've done. That's, that's, that was my major accomplishment. For some reason, someone told me early on, max yeah. out the, my, my thrift savings plan, which is similar to 401k. Yeah. But what I'm finding with trading, here's the great thing, Tony, I'm 53 years old. Yeah. I know that my trading profits are going to be greater than any amount that I've made from anything else based on the current strategy that I have now. Right. So it's a very optimistic strategy. You know, I have to agree with you. I don't know if you know this, but um, I, my dad was, uh, he was worried that uh, I would uh, lose all his money because my dad was a very <laughs> successful uh, entrepreneur. And he, he sent me to Chicago to, uh, expert lawyers to teach me how to not to lose his money. So uh, I took a lot of classes and I created this course. It's a free course. I have it online. It's called Permanent Millionaire. And one of the things I teach is to take 15 to 25% of your earned income and put it in uh, into assets that uh, generate uh, passive income or generate uh, wealth. So what you did is actually one of the smartest things that any person can do with their earned income. And what you were explaining to people is something called the speed of money. The speed of money is actually how fast you convert earned income into assets. 
and assets that generate passive income or assets that can generate wealth. And, uh, you know, you're, you're a pretty smart guy. And uh, I had to go and learn this from people and you did it instinctively. So that's great. Well, a blind squirrel finds an acre and every now and then. And that's what I did. <laughs> Thank, wow. You did a great job. Oh, I, I love this, Bobby. And tell me, tell me more about your trading plan. Yeah. So we want to keep a ma minimum of 0.10% in, um, uh, in theta, but if as the VIX changes, we yep. are allowed to go up more theta. So if uh, okay. the VIX is above 40, I can use up to 0.5% of my net lick in theta. Right. Okay. Wow. And then, uh, Tony. Yep. This is part of the uh, tasty market measures as well. This is the yep. same chart that they provide. You know, if VIX is. Yep. Less than 15, use 25% of your net lick. If it's above 40, you can use up to 50% of your net lick. But here's what I'm trying to do in my accounts now. Because, as we'll we'll see in a little bit, the 111 and 112s can handle a downward move in the market. I am operating under the theory that I can use 50% of my buying power at all times. Right. Are you taking into consideration that the initial margin will change and the initial margin, you know, can grow teeth, as we say, it can yes. become double or triple uh, whatever the initial margin is? Yes. So I think that, you know, in in normal circumstances, if something goes up and uh, or the market goes down and my buying power requirements go up and I'm at 50 percent in a low vol environment, then I should be able to withstand a move up to 90 or 95% of my buying power. And if, 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 if I ever am in a, in a, a situation to where, you know, it goes up to hundred percent buying power, then what can I do? I can sell some futures to get buying power relief, or I can close positions. Right, so right. that's, that's kind of my plan. And I'll show you that as we get up, but, I think under normal circumstances, I can use 50% of my capital. That's great. I love this, Bobby. I, I really, really love this. What a great plan you have here. So what we've got is the components of the strategy. It's a one, one, two trade. Right. So it's an out of the money put debit spread. And right. Two out of the money naked puts. And ideally, I like to keep a ratio of one to one of, you know, put debit spreads to, uh, to naked puts. Yep. And do you put it on as a single trade or you, you split it up with the vertical and then the naked put? I've split it up with the vertical and the naked put uh, under the Tasty Trade uh, uh, platform. It, they don't allow us to do it as one trade. So we have okay. to do it as two trades. All right. So what I'll do is I'll sell two puts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at 120 days to expiration. All righty. And the strike will be five delta puts, which is a little bit farther out than the one one one, right, Tony? I don't know what the delta is. A little is bit, yeah, yeah. You could say a little bit more, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the naked puts are ordinarily closed when they reach a ninety five percent profit. But right. Of course, everything I do is subject to over, overall portfolio metrics. In other words, if my theta were low, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I didn't need to close that because it would make my theta go down. Then I would leave right. it open. Right. So uh, okay. it is acceptable to allow the naked put to expire out of the money. So the, oh. then I do have a two X loss, but I don't set uh, stop losses or anything. I just kind of monitor everything. It is permissible to close the naked puts at a loss equal to two times the initial credit received. So if I sold something for a dollar, I can close it when it gets to three dollars. To three dollars, okay, okay. And normally, what's the credit that you're looking for in a, in this trade, Bobby? Uh, you're getting around fourteen to fifteen dollars. Uh, you right. know, maybe a little right. bit more, uh, fourteen, fifteen dollars on the uh, sale of the naked puts. And, and, you're and doing it on, on ES, okay. Yeah, let me pull up that spreadsheet. Let's see. Uh, I got right. a lot of spreadsheets here. Let's see. Say that make account. So this one is a $450,000 account. We Ooh. just started this account on November the 2nd. So All we're right. up uh, $2,400. Uh, actually, we didn't start trading it to the 8th. Uh, okay. So we're up $2,400. And then That's I put the trades in. And you see wow. here, 
yep. we did a put debit spread where it it, it cost us nine hundred eighty two dollars. Right. And that was for two tranches. And then mm -hmm. we did two tranches of the naked puts and brought in twenty six hundred dollars. So, you know, we're, we're bringing in a, a, a pretty good credit there. Yeah. But, yep. uh, and then our spreadsheet just keeps up with the trades and it will tell us, like, if this were to get down to uh, 21 days, it'll give us an auto close signal that'll turn yellow and tell us to close it. Let me show you that on the other spreadsheet, okay. what that looks like. Yeah, so here's our spreadsheet. So if something gets down to 20 or 21 days, it's telling me, hey, close this trade, right? Okay. Which you, is based you, on tasty research as well. Right, right. You don't want to take all the gamma risk. Right, so we can remove the gamma risk. Now, I traded this account yesterday, yeah. and it was at 21 days, and it told me to close it, but I didn't close this one, and the reason was – I liked where my theta was and to close yeah. all of those trades, my theta would have gone down below the 0.1%. So I left them on and I will close that trade on Monday and put on new trades. Now, what happens if it's 21 days and the puts have not lost 95% of their value? Then I, according to portfolio metrics, I could leave the trade on, I could close mm -hmm. it and reposition um, it, it really all depends on this page here. This this is the decision making. It, you know, if, are your deltas fine? Is your theta okay? Is your buying power okay? And if there's if all of these are acceptable, then I'll just leave the trade on. You know, I I love your spreadsheet. How you can uh, you know if you're low of theta, if you're high of theta, if you're using too much money uh, capital, if you're not using. So this keeps you in check. And I think that in order to become a good campaign trader, that you have to follow a plan like like yours. In my case, you know, I, I'm waiting for the opportunity when the market goes down hard or up hard, and then I take my trade. And I, I think the way you do it is very, very smart, Bobby. I like it. Well, thank you, Sonny. I appreciate that. So then um, if one of my five Delta puts reaches 30 Delta, then I have permission, but not a requirement, to close the trade and accept the loss or to place it in a problem child status where mm -hmm. I then monitor the debits and credits to ensure that the trade is ultimately profitable. Now you'll love this because what we do in the one, one, two trade yep. is I'll close the If it, it becomes a 30 Delta yep. and I decide to put it in problem child status, we'll close the trade, yep. book the loss, and then we'll roll it farther away uh, from the money in the same expiration if possible and create a 114 so we would sell the you know twice the number of puts or i'll roll it out farther in time and let me show you what this looks like because i yeah. think i've yeah. done this yeah. you would roll it what they say down and out right yep i'd roll when it down you roll, and out. are you always trying to get a credit because to follow yes. one of my rules death before debit awesome yes always for a credit so here's where one of my 111s uh ran into a problem and here's how yep. I dealt with it. So the initial trade brought in a credit of $408 on that naked put. Yeah. Market goes against me. Look at this, Tony. I took a $1,200 loss yep. on the naked yep. put. You so did. what I then did is sold it again farther out in time and yep. took in a credit $3 above the debit to close the trade. Right. Then I made $200 on the put debit spread because the put debit spread was working against, was working for me while the naked put was working against me. Of course. And I ultimately closed what I sold for $1,609. Those naked puts, I closed them for $411. So what I'll do is I create this little problem child thing to make sure yep. that my credits exceed my debits. So I was able to monitor this trade Mm -hmm. and roll it out and made a $200 profit. Do you have a rule for the long put uh, debit spread? Uh, how much profit when it's worth 80, 90%, do you close it? Yeah, so let's look at that. Uh, the put debit spread, typically, okay, it uses the same expiration as the naked puts. I do yep. 50 wide, and it normally costs me about a $10 debit or less, and yep. I put the long put on at a 25 delta, yeah, that's and a smart. That's my sweet spot. Twenty-five uh -huh. delta. Yep. 
And well, Tony, I, I learned everything I know from you. So don't be surprised. <laughs> you're going to see a lot of your stuff here. Okay, so good. the management under normal circumstances, most of these, like 99% of them expire worthless. And you're sitting there going, oh man, I wasted that money on the put debit spread. But permission is granted to close it before expiration if that spread is approaching a full profit. Yep. Or the current price of ES or the micros are under that profit tent of the put debit spread. And it's at risk of exiting the profit tent. If not close to the profit, then I could take go ahead and you know take the profit. And if any leg of that spread is in the money, then it must be closed before expiration to avoid exercise and assignment fees. Let's open the uh let's open the yep. platform here and let's Would see. You, you want to show us your trade or you want me to try to do one of your trades and see if I can make it? Yeah, that'll be fine. And let's look at our portfolio right now. I think you'll like this. Okay, yeah. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. So let's go to Curve. Let's do analysis. Now, this is the $450,000 account that we just started. And I want you to see the... Let's see. Oh, here we go. I gotta, well, gotta I'm happy another. you started it in, on Tasty Trade. Thank God. <laughs> Absolutely. Where else would I go? All right. Check this out. Oh, uh, that's, you know, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful picture. Isn't that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So what we do is if, you know, we're talking about when to take the, the profits here, for yep. example, if, if, if the price where this is currently where the price of the E-minis are, if you're down here and you've got some of this profit right. and you think that price is going to go up and you're going to get out of the profit tent, then certainly you could take that profit. And okay. the good thing is, Tony, you see the T zero line here. Yeah. Yeah. And here's what I love. You see that line just lifting up as the days go by. It gets they sweeter I, as yep. the days go by. Look at that. I know I, that I live for that little curve. I, I call it a levitation effect. What like a helium thing, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's just really great. It up, 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 and then you know when it gets to a point that it's 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 where you want to be, you're out. Right. You know, Liz always asks me, "How come you put in a trade for a credit and I you take it out for a credit?" And the, the reason I I made it do it is because uh, you know that little thing elevates and levitates. Yeah. And then as you get more and more of these, let's see if I can show you here what it looks like okay let's go to portfolio here look at that isn't that gorgeous it is a gorgeous it, it is a gorgeous and that's real money that's your real account Those that's are real, real money trades. real right. money real trades yeah uh here's the smaller account uh a smaller account over here you can see how that looks as well where you've got the you know you've got this little profit hump uh, that's between one and two standard deviations yep. Uh, yep. down. And then yep. you go to this one and you're at almost three standard deviations down uh, and you still got this nice profit tent. Now, if price were to drop today, you're going to experience a loss. But of course. this is at expiration, right? But as, as I keep campaigning these, this just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. You know, what people don't understand when they start doing trades like uh, like you like to do and I like to do, even if it goes to uh, under the circus tent, where I call it, uh, you will be in the house of pain temporarily. Yeah. Because you're going to be under underwater. And uh, you need two things. Number one, you need to be small enough to withstand the pain. And number two, have enough capital to withstand the uh, increase in margin. So... You know, this looks beautiful in theory, and it is, but you know, a few times a year, it's going to be scary. And I just want people to know that once, if you if you go inside the circus tent fast and where your maximum profit is, you will be underwater and you will be in the house of pain temporarily. And from my experience, Tony, out of 252 trading days yes, uh, per year, you're going to go, what the heck was I thinking about 10 days a year? Exactly. Exactly. 
10 days a year, you're going to go, oh, my God, what was I thinking doing this? You know, but right. 242 trading days a year, you're going to be like, you're just printing yeah. money. Yeah. The only thing is you you have to not get scared and not be too big in order to withstand those 10 days. Because exactly. that's where, where I think genius fails. You know, everything's beautiful until it ain't, you know? Yeah, you're exactly right. And so if you keep things small enough and keep your theta and your Greeks in line, then you should be able to withstand anything. And like, for the example, the, last year, it was an amazing thing to go, wow, the market's down 1% and our net lick in our account was up. I mean, it was just incredible. I'm like, wow, this is an amazing, amazing thing. So now I'm not saying that this is the, the holy grail, but it's something that that is working for me and has worked now for over, I guess, over two years. And uh, would you be kind enough to... Teach me. Can I go to my trading page and see if I if I got the jick jicks of it? Let me yeah. See. Let me stop sharing so you can share. Let me share. So let's see. So you like to go uh, 120 days, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if we use SPX because I'm a Mister SPX trader? Sure. Sure. Do you like to go to the monthlies or it doesn't really matter? It doesn't really matter. Okay. Since okay, I'm gonna let's let's choose this guy here. So let's go to the uh, 25 Delta. And here we are. So I like kind of round numbers. Sure. So maybe 43.75. How's that? Yep, yep that'd uh, be great. Yeah. And here I wanted to show people my foundation trade, and then I'm going to turn it into yours. Okay. So what I what I do is I, I see that I'm paying 61 bucks. I normally like to have a $15 credit. So in order to have a $15 credit, I have to sell two things that are should be worth $75. So maybe something that's $37. The good thing is here, you see the expected move on Tasty, 4260. That means I'm lucky enough, I'm gonna be further out than that. So let's say I'm gonna choose the, uh, let me see if we can do the 4175, that would be great. And here is a $11, $11 credit. If we see the curve, it's a little bit different than yours. Mm -hmm. You know, this would be like a bread and butter trade for mine. Uh, it's a 200 wide trade. And uh, I'm not really scared because the S&P can go to 39.50. For me, this is the foundation of all the trades. The four four one, the three three one, the two two one, the one one one, the one one two. This is like the brick and mortar of of, of trading, in my point of view. Now, let me uh, go to the trade page, and I'm gonna try to convert it into one of your trades. Let me delete this. Do you normally on the put spread, do you go 50 wide, Bobby, or, or what do you do? Yes, 50 wide. 50 wide. Okay. And I've experimented with everything from 50 wide all the way to 300 wide. Yeah. You know, I don't, in, in my case, I'm more price-based than, than white-based. But I'm going to follow your, because you're my professor today, and I don't want to fail my class. If I could only get a roll tide out of you. <laughs> okay. So here's the 50 wide. You said you like to pay around nine dollars. It's around eight dollars. Is yep, that that's okay? Great. That's Professor, absolutely great. Is that good? Okay. Let's show the people how that looks. So that's the vertical, and we would call that. Uh, your friend Tom uh, Shaw calls it the trap. I think, right? Mm -hmm. I call it the circus tent, and we all have a name for it. And here's it's a beautiful trap. And now you said you would go around, uh, you want to collect, you said around $14. Yeah, right? so I would go to a five delta. You would go to the five delta, and here we are, which is pretty far away. Oh my God. I don't, it's, it's really out there. So how about, how about this one? Do you like this one? The, yeah, that's great. 3750. Mm hmm. And then we would sell two of these. Two guys. of those. And that would give us a credit of 21. That's too much. Can we, should we push it out more or that's okay? No, I think that's fine. So here it is. 
the sweet Bobby one one two trade. Now watch this, Tony. Let's do this. Let's do the sweet Bobby slide. You ready? I am. Now, how it. about this? You put this on at 120 days. Right. You hold it for 60 days. Okay. And by that time, those two puts at 3750 are profitable. Yes. Why not slide the 3750 puts, close those for your profit? Okay. And then sell an additional 4325 put to slide this from a 112 into a ratio trade. Into a Tony special, you mean? Into a Tony special. And what we've done is we have reduced our notional risk. Now, for everybody playing at home, so we sold these puts for $14 or almost $15. When, when would you take them out, Bobby? About a 95% profit under normal situations. So when these when these uh, puts are worth, let's say, a buck or something. Yeah. You, you would shut them out, mm -hmm. right? Would delete them. And then you would try to sell one of the 30, 4325s. You could do that, right. Now, if you're going to do that after 60 days, you're probably not going to be at 95%. It's going to about take it probably 90 days for that to be a 95, 90, 95 percent winner. But right. this was this is something that you could do. You could slide it into a ratio spread at that point and and just collect additional credit, but also reduce your notional exposure. Since you now instead of having two naked puts way out, you've got right. the you've got the uh, the uh, you know you've you've turned it into a ratio spread. That's kind of cool, though, right? It, it is very cool. You convert the one one two into a one two zero, which mm -hmm. I call. It. Yeah, yeah. And Bobby, let's say if you have a hundred thousand dollar account, how many one one twos can you place a month or a week, every week? Okay, so I did this on the four hundred fifty thousand dollar account, Tony. We kind of figured it out. So. I can have on, I think it was, let's see, in 120 days, I thought I could have 16 of these positions on. I think that's what we we figured up uh, for a $450,000 account. Okay. Because the, the normal margin for one of your trades, I believe it's, um, it is like, well, if you do it on SPX, it's around like three thousand dollars. You would say. That's a good question. Let's see. Let Let me do it. I'm, let me I'm see how much it. buying power I'm using in the four hundred fifty thousand dollar account now. I thought it was. Um, let me do it for the people playing at home. So I've got one, two tranches. There's one, two tranches. There's four. I've got five tranches on, and I am using. Five trunches, and I'm using forty-six thousand dollars in buying power with five trunches. Okay. So forty-six divided by five is nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand. But, but, but now, but that's in an IRA. That is in an IRA. Oh, okay. Here on FPX, one of your one one two trades is uh, sucking up around seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Of buying power. If we did it on SPY, uh, which is a tenth of the size, it would be $7,500. If we do it on ES, it would be around $14,000. And if yep. we do it on MES, it would be around $3,500. Depending on, you know, the cool thing about S&P 500, if we have all, si all sorts of sizes, MES, ES, SPY, SPX, to fit everybody's budget or everybody's capital. Oh, absolutely. I think that's the great thing about this trade is that, you know, you can do it on the micros, you can do it on the mini, you can do it on spy, you can do it on SPX. Uh, and and like you say, you and, and another thing that I like doing it on like the micros and everything is we don't have uh, pattern day trade uh, restrictions. We, right. you know, uh, you get in the 1256 contracts uh, where you're saving on taxes and there's all kinds of benefits. Uh 
uh, to the, you, you don't have to worry about pattern day trading and things of that nature. It's just, just a great way to, to trade these. Now on, on your trades, how, what percentage of your trades you think are one, one twos and how, uh, how many are another type of trade? A hundred percent are one, one twos. Oh, so you, you drank the Kool-Aid. I drank yeah, I the like Kool-Aid. I, I drank like the Kool-Aid. I like the campaigning of these trades. So Tony, I don't, I know, you know, if we were to trade like Tom Sosnoff, you know, if you just throw up something, I mean, chances are he's going to trade it. And I just don't, I just, I just try to do a campaign of one particular type of trade and in one particular market, regardless of volatility, so that I can just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. The five things that are, are in my trading plan that, that I do, here's what I do. I sell options premium. Yep. At a high probability of success. Yep. More I than allow, 95%. More than 95%. Yep. I allow theta to decay is step yep. three. I manage chaos. And step five is rinse and repeat. So let and me you go manage those chaos again. by taking care of your capital, not getting too big, right? Yeah. Yeah. By rolling, by closing mm -hmm. positions that may go against me. At a yep. 2x loss. So those are the things. Now, 80% of my time is spent managing chaos for something that <laughs> happens less than 10 days a, a year. You know, I, I want to show you something that might scare the bejesus out of you. Okay. And uh, so my most it's not profitable... a picture of my mother in law, is it? No, no, no. no okay. I, I, I'm saving that for the end. So, you know, one of my rules is never sell a naked call right oh but i hate them unfortunately unfortunately i i like selling calls so my most profitable trade this year on a bull market you won't believe it bobby it's okay. a one to zero to the upside i normally sell something let's say the 45 75 here now with the vix low in fact liz doesn't like this trade at all but it's it's worked for uncle tony this year you know and, you know, I like to get a $15 credit. So mm -hmm. that means I have to, you know, maybe sell. I have to get about $100. So I'm looking for something worth 50 So let's say this guy here. It's too much. Let me go over here. Let me see. So this, this Bobby, would be... So far to 2023, it's an upside one to zero. This trade has been my most profitable trade this year, believe it or not. Get out. Yeah. And is it because you, the in a bull market, that you're collecting that uh, circus tent profit? Uh, no, I'm only trying to get a thousand dollars out of this. You know, I collect $16. So when I make my thousand dollars, that means when this is down to six dollar credit or five dollar credit, I take it off. And the reason it has is it has worked for me, and uh, is twofold. I used to I used to short the first day we go up, and then I would be in the house of pain. I used to sell on the second day. I I I used to, and now I learned something called T plus three. We could say it's Tom plus three, but let's say Tony plus three. Whenever I feel the urge inside my body to sell a call, I wait three days. <laughs> and after the third day, I do my stupid one to zero trade. And uh, they, I'm only trying to make a thousand bucks on each uh, on each unit. And um, so, you know, it's very risky. It scares everybody. and they could be as, as maybe 50 wide, 75 wide. I still think I have a little cushion. You know, look at this trade right now for January. The break even is around 4,700. You know, it seems far away, but 4,700 could be, you know, five minutes in this type of market. Sure. We, we can get there in 30 seconds. I know this is not for everybody. I'm just being honest. Um, uh, you know, I'm. it's scary, but this year, Luckily, 
this has been a very, very good, uh, good, good trade for me. But look at that. I mean, that's I, w- I would consider this much better than selling just a single naked call. I know you've got two nakeds there, but yep. uh, but look at that little profit tent there, your your circus tent. Yep. Uh, I like that, especially after doing three straight days up. That's when you put it on. I like that, Tony. That's great. And, you know, I did another study that if I would have held my trades for longer and uh, – Instead of just taking my a thousand bucks, I I could have had one or two bad, nasty uh, losers, but I would have minted money because I would have landed on on the high part of the tent so many times this year, it would be unreal. So that's something that, you know, but I don't have the stomach to hold them uh, because the Vega risk is just too much. It's just, just too, too much. And I wanted to, to throw at you another concept, if if you have a, if 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 you honor me, we'll show you something. So oh, absolutely. So uh, before you move on from this, though, Tony, yes. let me say something. One of the reasons that I might put this on, yeah, is let's say that I've been putting on all of these bullish trades that I'm putting on, and my delta exceeds my 0.15 percent of my net lick, yes. so that I go, hey, if I'm going to keep myself delta neutral then I could put this particular trade on. And because look at it, it's got negative 26 deltas. So there are times when I can certainly do something <laughs> like this if my deltas are out of line. Yeah. But this can really bite bite you in the butt. Just, you know, I just want to have that disclosure. This trade could be could be painful. Sure. And how would how would I manage it? Once the vertical is worth 90, 95%, I would take it off and roll the call up and out. The problem with rolling calls is not like rolling puts. There's not a lot of premium. So you really you really have to, uh, you know, this is not for everybody, but you're right. It, it can be good. Now, I have this theory of protecting by adding risk. And maybe I want to see if, if you like my concept. Okay. You know, to, to me, one of the most profitable trades is the naked put. Just a straight up naked put, right? Yes. So if, uh, you know, a bread and butter naked put here would be selling, let's say this one, the 4,400 uh, trade. This would be like a bread and butter trade for me. Uh, it takes the 4,400. It's it's almost uh, 12% down. You risk uh, $7,500, $75,000 to make $2,700. So to me, this is the most profitable trade on planet of selling a naked put which in your one one two trades you know you have a component of 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 naked putness right now since you trade a lot of the uh the one one twos and the one two zeros etc uh when the market goes down this naked put starts getting into trouble right yes but what happens if you want to put in a one two zero trade? Can it? If you want to put a one two zero trade on, it ha- two things happen. Number one, you can get a bigger credit for it, or you can make it wider. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I have a naked put on and I want to protect my naked put, let me show you what I do. And since you are the professor here. I want to get I want to get your idea. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So what I would do is maybe I go 10, 15, 20 dollars out and I would buy this one Bobby. I would buy mm-hmm. something above my naked put because in us if we are heading into a tsunami and the tsunami is coming whoa. When you have a naked put, the first thing the tsunami will hit is your naked put, right? Yes. And I don't like that. If the tsunami is coming, the first thing I want it to hit is to hit a wall. And the wall would be a long put, not a short put. Mm-hmm. So in order to to build a wall, I mean, uh, not the wall that you know who wants to build, mm-hmm. but uh, we would put a we put in this uh, 4525. So here, the tsunami... Is gonna hit the green. The green. The green is the wall, and the the red is the you know it's a risk, right? 
And then I would look, Bobby, to finance this wall, which is $30, by selling two of the $15. Um, and I'm doing it here simultaneously. So you would have something like this. I will turn it into a 1-1-2 trade. If we do it at the same time, you are protecting your naked put. You know, we started with a 4,400 put, right? Yes. And our break even was around only only 20. You see the credit's $27. So it's only $27 of uh only it had $27 of a cushion. By doing the one two zero trade to protect to engulf this uh naked put, I turn it into actually your one one two trade. And this trade is the only trade, Bobby, the only trade that as if we go down more, the wider I can make it, the more powerful I can make it. There's no other trade in the world that I found. Because normally when you put in a naked put and it goes against you, in order, in order to protect it, you have to do something else, like a, like a short delta trade. Here, no. Here, if we go... If we go deeper down, you can still put on this trade and engulf your risk. And by adding more risk, you actually protect your original investment. So this is something I came up with by uh, protection by adding more risk. And since it's a trade you're very familiar with, is uh, I wanted to share it with you and, and, and your viewers. And if, if people like to sell naked puts, this is a way, if, if your naked put is in trouble, you can engulf it. And convert it into a one-one-two trade, and uh, and reduce the risk significantly. I love that. I love that. I, let's call that the Tony slide. I like that. You're sliding a uh, uh, put, and then you're sliding other things around it, and uh, and making it into one-one-two. That's beautiful. Yep. Yep. And so everybody who has a naked put that's in trouble and has enough capital, they can engulf it into and convert it to a one-one-two, and protect it. That's beautiful. Hey, Tony, you. while you're showing different things, the one thing that I did not incorporate that you showed when you were on with Liz yes. was the uh, broken wing butterfly. Can you go through that really quick? Yeah. Would you if mind? You have a bit, if you have a Bitcoin, I'll be happy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll be happy to do it. So the broken wing butterfly is actually a bread and butter trade from my friend, Tony the Bat Batista, which is... Uh, you know, and when do when do you use this uh, broken wing butterfly? You use it when you already have too much stuff on. You don't and you don't want to uh, risk more money, and uh, but you keep you keep one. You you still want to be playing. You know, we all want to keep playing, right? Sure. So we're gonna start again. When where do we start? Always at the twenty five delta, right? Mm -hmm. So so here we go. We would start at the twenty five delta, and to make. To make the, the people playing at home easy. So here we are. We go 50 wide. We go to 4,400. We sell two. And we have a credit of $19, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to use that $19 credit to buy something else, right? Something else that is less than $19. Let's say something, let's say this one. And we still have a credit. If you do this trade on, here you have it. It's uh, it's still it's still death before debit, right? We 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 got a credit, and this this trade you see the capital instead of using seventy thousand dollars worth of capital, you're only using four thousand dollars worth of capital. But the only difference here is that we are only looking for a few dollars. If this trade is up to four, five, six, seven dollars, we would take it off. So that's the broken wing butterfly. When when should people use it? People should use it, Bobby, when when they already have too much stuff on, or when they don't have a lot of conviction. And uh, if you don't have a lot of conviction and you're you're afraid, this trade uh, this trade can work. And you know what I do sometimes? You you might think this is weird. So I would put in a, a broken wing butterfly, right? And what happens if we crash down? The further out put which is normally the put that will lose the most money, right? In our little example here, this would be the uh, $4,300 put. 
that put normally is a loser, right? Mm -hmm. Always. But if we start crashing down, that $4,300 put will start making you some money. And what I like to do, if I double my money on that put or, or maybe triple it, I would sell it out and convert my uh, broken wing into a one, two, zero, uh, leave the two puts naked. Uh, you know, I would only have one naked, but I already have in my pocket uh, extra extra money from from profiting from the uh, the 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 long put that I had at the end. So that's how I use the broken wing butterflies. Yeah, that's great. And like you say, it gives you positive theta without using a lot of buying power. It does. It does. It, it keeps you playing. If you know you're running out of chips and you still want to play the game, hey, you can do this. <clears throat> and Bobby, before before we leave, since you teach this to uh, students, to your teacher, what are the most common mistakes you see when people are starting to trade, and and even advanced traders? I think one of the the biggest mistakes is that we're always searching for something new. We're always searching for the shiny object. You know, we call it the shiny object syndrome. The um, Holy Grail? Yeah, the Holy Grail. It's like whatever I'm doing is not good enough. So yeah. even though it's working for you, you're like, well, I got to find something else. There must be something new. And, you know, it's okay to be a pioneer, but celebrate those things that are working and and put those on don't worry about finding the next you know newest greatest thing as tony as you said earlier it's really just puts and calls in various combinations we're buying and selling uh, you know there's there's no perfect trade uh quit chasing the shiny object do something that you see other people doing that's working for them something that's working for you and don't be afraid to experiment, but at the same time, don't be afraid to keep going back to the well for something that's working. Right. You know, in Spanish, there's a thing, I don't know if it makes sense in English, that everybody's looking for the black thread. You know, when you, when you, I, I, I don't sew things, you know, I don't, like you, you're sewing your sock or something. So one of the best inventions of humanity is the black thread because you can use it to sew every, a lot of stuff and it turns out good. So there's a saying in Spanish that everybody's looking for the black thread. And actually the black thread is only, in trading, it's only death before debit. Be smart. In my, in my point of view, the black thread, or el hilo negro as we call it in Spanish, is buying the 25 put, selling something against it, do it consistently and just keep churning and churning and churning and be wary about your capital. Be wary about your ratios, which you do. A, I, I've never seen anybody do it more disciplined than you. You have an Excel sheet that green, red, blah, blah. You know, I mean, it's amazing. And you, you incorporate discipline into your trading and I love it. So to me, that's the black thread. The black thread is finding something that works and uh, do it, do it consistently, do it in the correct size and uh and just keep keep growing your pile yeah and uh you know uh, tom sosnoff of course he he and he the reason he's trading so many things is he's got you know uh they've got eight hours or more of programming to fill every day and so it's interesting to keep people you know doing all these other trades but just because tom is slinging everything it doesn't mean that you and i need to be slinging all of these trades as well you know no. No, um, because we don't have those millions of dollars of capital to back it, back it up. Yeah, right. Yeah. So find a few things that are working and and stay with those things and get good at those things before you launch on and to find something else. That's great. That's great, Bobby. I had the best. I could talk trading to you for ten, ten hours. I really enjoyed our session today, and uh, I want to tell my viewers that if you want to grow your pile. You have to follow Sweet Bobby. Sweet Bobby has a YouTube channel. He has a Discord. He does private classes. You do everything, Bobby. You're 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 amazing, and I think people could benefit and uh, by following you and learning from you. And uh, you're a great educator and a great friend. And I really really enjoyed my time with you. And I, me personally, I learned a lot. 
And I want to thank you for that, Bobby. Thank Tony, so it was much. an honor being with you today. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to many conversations in the future. I love this well, stuff. Hopefully we can do it again. And Let's remember, you got to risk it to get the biscuit, baby. <sighs> <laughs>